Hi everybody, so today we are celebrating International Day Against Violence and Bullying at School and for this beautiful reason we've got here uh, Robin uh, from Hello. Youth Network. Hi Robin, how are you doing? <laughs> Good, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, really nice to have you. And so uh, the, the purpose of this session today is to have a chat about how bullying impacts our lives, whether they are small lives or, or big lives, and uh, how this can... Can you sit up on your knees, Freddie, because we can oh, hardly see knees. your head, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how this impact, how bullying impacts our life and uh, whether we can develop something, a shield, or uh, can equip ourselves with, uh, with a toolkit uh, to help to uh, help us go through there's very inconvenient experiences, be that at school or maybe even later in life. And uh, you, Robin, you you just uh, like, you know, wizardess of uh, fighting <laughs> off all the symptoms of bullying because uh, you, you've done it. And uh, yeah. and you, you you went through through the whole uh, experience and uh, you came out of it stronger. So mm. tell us how it was for you. Yeah, well, I think that's the thing with challenges in life is even though they're really challenging at the time, if we can work through them and we can support ourselves and get support from other people, then they can end up being these amazing opportunities of growth and we can end up feeling actually happier and more alive having gone through them. So hopefully this session will kind of help any of you that might be going through similar things because unfortunately it is quite common and it does affect quite a lot of people so um a little bit about um my experience with bullying is I I've had experience with bullying from primary school um so I think I just I'm not really sure why, because it's quite funny. I can't really remember it that vividly. Um, so I often found it easier to talk to my teachers more than my peers. Um, and so I then got picked on a bit and I, I l lacked confidence with interacting with my own age group a bit. And then I got into secondary school and I was so excited to start this new school I got an art scholarship and um and then unfortunately I just hated the school I would come home from school every day crying um and I actually got picked on by pretty much the whole year group so it was quite an intense experience um I did kind of isolate myself, so I think I was a little bit of an easy target for them to pick on. Um, but lots of the boys used to call me Manzilla because I was really tall. I was about my, the height I am now, which is now an average height, but I just kind of grew very quickly. I was very skinny. I had big shoulders, had lots of hair, <laughs> big, thick eyebrows, a bit of a monobrow, <laughs> and they called me Manzilla. And... And it just really uh, knocked me. And so after a year at that school, I moved schools. And um, in that summer break, I came, I sort of thought, I'm going to reinvent myself. And I went and got my hair highlighted, a bit blonder, and I got my eyebrows done. And I, could, and I wore makeup. And so I started this new school in year eight. And I was like the new girl and I got quite a lot of attention and and I did, then didn't really know what to do with that attention. I became overly focused on my appearance mm -hmm. and it was from a place of insecurity. It wasn't from a place of feeling confident. It was me always wanting reassurance, other people's opinions really <laughs> mattered to me. Um, and I ended up kind of losing myself um, and I wasn't very happy at home or at school. And so I then decided that I needed to do something about that. And luckily, my dad had come across um, 
meditation um, through a colleague. And so he thought it would be really helpful for me. And so he suggested it and I just loved it. Mm -hmm. I was just so desperate to do something about it. And I experienced more calmness and more confidence. And so I then became more and more motivated to practice every day. And so um, that's why I'm here to just share some tips and practices with you. I think yoga in general is an amazing practice for helping you with your self-esteem and your confidence. But even um, if you don't have much time to do that, there are a few practices that we can look at um, that you can just do in your day that might only take five minutes. Well, that's a, that's a very, um, very embracing story. And uh, one that springs to my mind almost immediately is uh, uh, how... Uh, how innovative approach your dad had uh, because you, you're talking way uh, back in the past uh, when yoga would not be as popular or as trendy as it is now and uh, even if people knew about it they would not really associate that particularly as a um, toolkit for children that might have been still seen as uh, as a yeah recreational activity for women so mm -hmm. you know, a, a huge uh, hu huge uh, admiration to your to your dad and uh, to, to his approach and uh, that he decided to try it out because it definitely worked out but it was the same uh well the same similar, similar, similar for you uh, and your experience at school uh, do you want to say something how how it was for you and uh, that picking up not necessarily by the whole year group but uh, it was actually a group of people who you really wanted to be with so though these um kids there were the popular ones out of the year at in the year well mainly in my class were the popular ones and they were just a group of boys, about about five, six of them. And I, I was paired up with one of them being the new kid uh, at that school, paired up with one of them for them to tell me how the school is, play with me, show where everything is. Um, that was for the first term and then after that term of school that when that finished then he started changing a bit because i i think he was only nice to me because it i was the new kid he was told to be set with me and then after that it just changed a lot he and the thing is, we were both on, I saw him every day and it quite changed because every day I had, I went on a bus to school and I saw him there because he also takes his bus. And so I tried to talk to him. In some days he'd be really annoyed, grumpy. And he'd like, I'd try to talk to him really calmly and he'd start How did it make you feel? Noise. It just made me feel quite frustrated because I'm trying to be nice to him. He certainly had something happen and he's now taking that out on me. Yeah, and that wasn't and then, a very pleasant experience, exactly, was it? Exactly, and then... After that, and then there's those group of boys, we start getting arguments, falling out, we get yellow cards, and then we start hating each other even more, and then everyone just start, me and those group of boys start walking away from each other, sometimes got pinned to each other, get really annoyed, and then still now even after that's been sorted there's one kid that still gets really annoyed with me because of what happened because it was only one kid not all the group and do you know what do you do 
because I'm sure that uh, Robin will be sharing with us some of her tools. So what was yeah. yours, the most powerful tool? It was really just when you started doing yoga, then you, you like introduced it to me. You gave me I, the idea of breathing mm. when, in those situations. Because at that point, I just couldn't really hold my anger that well. I just start because I'd have a very loud voice compared to other children. And with that loud voice, I'd be shouting, getting really annoyed. And breathing helped. Yeah. yeah. So shall we ask Robin what worked for her? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> well, um, I found that as well as yoga and meditation specifically like journaling and um, setting myself small personal development goals really helped so for example I had this little journal and so one of my goals would be to build my self-esteem and my goal would be to you do intention setting every day and then I'd kind of write in this with how I was going so I'd write when I had a really positive day or I'd write when I had a challenge Um, because it's really important to remember that with these practices sometimes it goes to plan and it works and it feels amazing and then sometimes we do get stuck back into our old habits and a bit like you Freddie I also sometimes get a bit angry and a bit shouty <laughs> when I'm stressed oh, and so um, <laughs> well we all have a little shadow side <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> and sometimes it comes out and I'll be like oh no I've done it again but it's just part of the journey and part of the practice and you just got to pick yourself back up again and have a go But I found that really helpful. And there's this woman called Louise Hay, and she has these power thought cards. You can get them on Amazon and it's this pack of cards um, and you can just you can you know, you can just randomly pick one or you can, you know, purposely choose a statement that really resonates with you. So I'll give you an example. So. um, This intention is based around not feeling good enough or um, feeling that you hate yourself or that you don't deserve love which might be quite a common thing for people to be thinking and have self-doubts after being bullied so the card is I love and approve of myself now that's a big sentence to say because lots of people would probably feel quite uncomfortable saying that but it's not in like a showy off way like oh I'm amazing and I love myself it's like a really beautiful deep way like I love and approve of myself and I want to take care of myself because when I take care of myself I can be the best version of me and I can serve others more so it's like that kind of nice love not like a showy off one um, it's a bit like treating your friend, isn't it? Because sometimes stuff that we say to ourselves in our head, uh, we would never really say that to anybody who is close to us. And we would never wish those things on anybody who is uh, either our more than our, um, child or, 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 or partner but we can be just so cruel to ourselves and especially that part well about love what well, we say very often well, I love you I love this or that but then I approve it's almost that self-acceptance that I am good as as I am even though there is room for improvement I am good as I am and I approve that I'm comfortable with that I think that is just so difficult to say and even to think. I mean, even if you say that loud, it almost feels like, really? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, but if you make that like a repetitive, active, well, um, yeah. Uh, practice, habit. yeah, and it becomes yeah. habit 
and then you're replacing those negative thoughts with that and it just stays with you and mm. becomes a natural habitat. That's it. Mm. That's right. And um, I think with intention setting, it's really important that you really believe it when you say it. You've got to say it as if it's in the present moment, as if it's true, as if it's already happened. So I would say those to myself when I noticed that I was being really critical and harsh on myself and I'd replace those thoughts. And then in time, that became the way I started to think and see the world and see myself. So um, that's one practice. Another practice that we could actually do on our mats is one of the yoga poses called Warrior Two. And it's really good for finding confidence so we can hop up and have a go. You do, because I may not fit into the uh, picture. I don't fit in. Yes. There you go. You don't like So when you're ready, we're going to make this shape. And it's a really bold shape. So we're going to step our left foot forward and keep the right leg back. So a nice wide step and stance. And then with your back foot, just turn it out to the side. That's it. And bend your left knee nice and generously. So you're looking for your um, knee to be above your ankle. And just make sure that you're not pushing yourself or overstretching too much just be nice and kind of grounded and confident in your stance and then we're going to bring our arms out by our side so that the hands are level with the shoulders that's it and then look over the hands I already feel stronger that's it and now see if you can repeat your intention so maybe it's I'm invisible I'm not invisible, invincible. <laughs> invincible. Invincible. <laughs> That's it. And I am enough. I, I am enough. enough. That's it. I love and accept myself. I, I love, love and accept myself. myself. So that's it. You can do some intention setting. And then let's have a go on the other side. So I that you're you fine. <laughs> <laughs> so taking a nice wide step arms out nice and level and with this pose if we think of like a bold fierce warrior that's taking up lots of space courageous and see if you can now take some nice slow deep breaths to really help you find your power and your strength so finding something to focus out in front of you, looking over the middle finger of your hand and see if you can take a nice, slow, deep breath and feel your belly expand. You can almost... And then as you exhale, feel your belly draw in. If it helps, you could bring your hands on your belly. You can almost imagine your enemy or that bully standing in front of you. And <laughs> you meditate <laughs> I can combat you. I'm stronger than you. <laughs> That's it. Just through the power of your breath. Yeah. And then when you're getting tired, you can gently lower your arms and bring the feet together. So just even breathing deeply and allowing your belly to expand on your inhale and contract on your exhale, that is really powerful because it helps to relax our nervous system and it helps us feel confident and grounded. And we can tell when someone's talking and they're using their abdomen and their diaphragm, they sound grounded and relaxed, like I'm talking from my belly now. Whereas if we're stressed, we talk from our throat, like if we're shouting, we're kind of talking up here from our head. So and people pick up on that. When we're talking in this grounded, confident way, we kind of attract people to think, oh, I want to hang out with that person. They seem really calm and confident in themselves. So that's another good little technique. 
what we try to do to encourage consciousness on breathing through your belly is to put your hand on your chest almost like checking that you're definitely not breathing through your chest and the other one either on your heart or on your belly and then as you breathe in in you're feeling your belly in like a balloon and you feel grow it uh, growing it and expanding and as you breathe out you feel like that belly is deflating almost like a balloon and almost gets stuck to your spine and then you again breathe in through your nose and through your belly feel how that air feels in your belly and breathe out from your belly through your nose completely and then uh, once that complete uh, I very often recommend to Freddie to try do alternate nostril breathing so what we're doing for that are you already yawning <laughs> <laughs> so we we try to well we cover one nostril with your thumb and uh, breathe in to your second nostril we cover second and breathe out through the first breathe in through your first <coughs> Cover first, breathe out through your second. Breathe in through your second. Sometimes even closing your eyes helps. And breathe out through your first. And one more breath through your first. And breathe out through your <coughs> second. And uh, what you said about that agitation and uh, breathing through your through your chest or through your th uh, and speaking through your chest through your throat, it's um, it, it's after that you almost lower your emotions down and uh, encourage that diaphragmatic uh, breathing even more and introduce that calmness where you're almost dissolving the effects of uh, of what bullying did to you and uh, <coughs> you might have reacted back if you didn't didn't have that calmness inside you yeah that's so powerful to have because when we're bullied it is a form of trauma and so it's really important to have these healing practices so that we can kind of regulate ourselves and kind of heal through that so those are beautiful practices to do so um, is there anything in particular that uh, you'd like to like maybe wrap up and as a, as a summary uh, to, to leave to mums, dads, uh, kids, teens, anybody in the family who, who gets affected by, by bullying, what will be the shield for them to take with them into every day? I think um, just it's really busy in modern life and just listening to this you might think I don't have time to do all of this but even if you can just pick one thing um, and even if it just takes five minutes a day if you do that on a regular basis it's going to have such a profound impact um, and then you can just build on that so I just start small and then then you're going to feel really good and positive that you're doing something to help yourself. And then you, that will motivate you to do more and more. And also, I think a loving kind kindness meditation practice is really helpful as well, because that can just lift us up. And if we remember that often people that are bullying people in that phase of their life, they're not bad they're not evil they're just maybe going through a really rough time and it doesn't mean that it's okay for them to behave like that to you but it can sometimes help us have empathy and compassion and forgiveness for that person which is really important for our healing as we can see that that person 
is just suffering and that their meanness is not personal to us. So that can be really helpful. And a loving kindness meditation is basically where you send loving kindness. So you you wish for yourself to be loved, to be happy and healthy. And then you think of someone that you really love and you send them those wishes. Then you have to think about someone that you don't really like so much or that makes you feel a bit bad, maybe the bully. And you have to send them love, happiness and health. And then you do a stranger and then you think of the whole world. So um, there's lots of um, recordings of that on YouTube and everywhere online if you just type in loving kindness meditation. So that would be my recommendation. Oh, that's just so beautiful, Robin. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us and uh, and especially finishing with this uh, really beautiful, kind and uh, loving um, message for, for, for everybody that actually gives that comfort and hope that uh, whatever happens in our lives, it's, uh, it's just temporary. And uh, if we if we focus our mind on that, uh, anything can happen. The bullies can mm. appear. We can feel better, and we can change the world around us. So thank you so much for that. Really, really grateful from the depth of my heart. Thank you so much, Joe and Freddie. I've loved spending time with you and learning and listening to you guys as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, well, what a wonderful day to celebrate the um, anti-bullying day and uh, Mm -hmm. having a a chat about it. So thank you again so much, Robin, and uh, hope to see you soon. (laughs) See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.